What's going on everyone? Right Hand Drive Ron with you here today. If you notice, to my right, your left, my daughter BK. What's up everybody? I'm back. That's right folks, she's back. And together, we're back to back like we're on the cover of Lethal Weapon. <laughs> nope. Alright. So today is going to be an update video. It's part two. The sequel. Of installing a tachometer in our 1996 Honda Acti. So our donor vehicle today was provided to us from Billy from BT Transportation and JDM Imports. Check it out here. And he's allowed us the opportunity to work on his truck with his mint chocolate chip cluster here. Now the difference in this tachometer video and the first one that's already out on my channel is that this one here is a 16 pin configuration and a six pin configuration. The existing video shows everyone how to install and wire up the 12 pin and six pin configuration. So this is really just an update video. We'll be installing this onto Poker Face as he likes to call the truck based off some history that he has uncovered. Nonetheless, stick around with us. We're going to put this cluster in the truck, show you guys how to wire it up, and tack out. All right, so there again, as I mentioned earlier, this is a follow-up uh, to the existing cluster install video that I did where I went through and showed everyone how to test all of your inputs here to figure out which wire was what. Luckily, with this cluster, it came with the matching pigtails, which is something you'd always like to try to find. If you're buying these from Yahoo Auctions, sending them to many at Exporting All Things JDM on Facebook for them to purchase for you. Try to find something that comes with the pigtails. That makes it a lot easier. Um, in the first video, I basically had blank clips and I had to go through and source out which wire went where um, and for clips that didn't match the cluster. So since these pigtails clips here match the cluster, it's a lot easier to go through. So what I'm doing here, you guys can see, I've got the 16 pin set up here. I've got one through eight, nine through 16. I've labeled the wire colors. We're gonna go through now with our 12 volt meter and just test each one to see which indicator illuminates. Um, for the tachometer and some of the other um, instrument features here, you're not going to be able to test that because that tachometer requires a pulse. Um, so you can't really do that just by applying 12 volts to it. Um, but the other ones we can check. Luckily, the wire colors I've already sourced out in my other video. Check it out. I'll display it here somewhere in this video. Maybe here. Maybe there. Um, but yeah, so just to show you guys what we're set up like. You can see our blue plug right here with the plug plugged into the cluster. Okay, one is gonna be red wire up top right here. So we're starting here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right here. And then we've got nine through 16, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16. Okay, so that's how this configuration is gonna be laid out. So what I'm gonna do now is probably move into time-lapse, go through and check these, show you guys what's up while I'm doing it. We'll start populating the board here. When we're done, we've got a pin out for which wire should be what for this cluster. So before moving on to uh, time lapse there, just to kind of cruise through here, I just want to show you guys. I've got uh, my ground here for my probe instrument on the ground of the cluster. Um, just want to show you guys what some of these look like when they illuminate. So let's see here, see what we got. All right, so there's emergency brake, which we expect. That's green and red wire. Emergency brake. All right, there's your hot Chevy emblem. It's way before the fame likes to call it. Also known as your catalyst is overheating. So that's what I'm gonna do in time lapse, just to go through, find out what's illuminating here, populate that board, and uh, give you guys that easy pin out. All right, so we've pinned out our 16 pin uh, plug at this point to know what's on what red high beam second spots a blank <clears throat> Battery's gonna be your white and blue Yellow reds oil green red e-brake green blue left blinker black is your ground Green yellow is gonna be your right blinker Yellow is gonna be your catalyst overheat aka hot Chevy emblem right there 10 is blank 11 red and blue that's going to be your high beam and those high beams right there have a circuit to where they ground out for that indicator to come on um, your cluster so if you're pinning them out and not getting anything don't worry about it honda's good about keeping colors the same um, on their instrument clusters especially around this mid you know early to mid uh, 1990s so when we get in there to uh, do the soldering in of the wiring uh, plugs for this red and red and blue is going to be your high beams find them on your existing plug wire them in we're going to be good there Moving on, item 12 here is going to be your yellow and green. That is your temperature, 13, 14, blank. 15 is blue. That's your tack signal, and 16 is blank. Once we get under the dash, I'll show you guys where to pick that tack signal up. 
Uh, there's been many places to do it. You can actually do it back at the engine around the ignition coil. Um, I like to do it underneath the dash because like Honda likes to do, they also keep um, a place underneath the dash typically for that tack signal in those 90 model uh, Hondas there. So there's the pin out, save it, take a pick. We're moving on to the six pin. All right, so I elected to go ahead and keep the 16 pin and six pin up at the same time. That way we have it all in one spot here for the video. So going down the list, uh, spot number one, red and black, that's your instrument illumination. And there again, I'm going to show you guys how I'm, what I'm considering position one. With the plug plugged in, the one position is going to be your far left. Two, three, four, five, six goes to your right. All right. So now that we're there, red and black, instrument illumination, yellow, white. It's going to be your fuel. That's position two. Three is red and yellow. That's your seat belt. If your vehicle happens to have that. Uh, I know my 91 did not, so that's new for the 96. Four and five are blank, and six is a white and red wire, which could potentially be a ground for the high beam, something the 91 truck didn't have. So once we get inside uh, the 96 truck and take a look at what wires are there behind that single plug, we'll be able to track that down and figure out uh, what we need to do. So at this point, we'll go ahead and get everything back over to the truck. We'll start taking out that cluster and make a swap. Before we get down to business, let's migrate back here and take a look at this sweet truck here from Billy there at BT Transportation. This was one of the originals from exporting all things JDM right here. Yeah, yeah. Super clean, had the upholstery done on it. Got the stitching, I think the Acti needs that, black Cecil red stitching. Quick connect, steering wheel there. Quick disconnect, rather. Gonna make it easy on me to get that thing out of the way. Super cool. Those Honda OEM wheels from Japan with the mud stars. Very nice. All right, what's up, everybody? Coming to you live from Tight Quarters University, AKA the Acti Cab. You know how it is. So uh, Billy has made it somewhat easy for us in order to get to his cluster here. Steering wheel that's hindered us in pass installations. Quick disconnect, race truck, keep that in mind. So one cool thing about this install is he actually found a cluster that was very, very close to the actual mileage that his uh, original cluster came in his truck. So his truck showing 143, um, 288. The new cluster here, 141 is 002. So these are pretty close, which is cool to try to keep those as close as you can. We're not rolling odometers here, but just to show you guys the difference. So what we'll do here is we'll go in and we'll, this right here just pops out. Then you've got um, two screws here on the bottom, and I believe you've got two screws up top here uh, to remove that cluster. There again, I did all this on my first video, so the more detailed explanation and where all the bolt location stuff are there. Um, so what I'm going to do is run in a time lapse now just so we can get this cluster out, get this process moving. All right, folks, we've got the cluster out. As I mentioned before, this one's around 143,000. There's the video evidence. Um, so as you can see, as mentioned, you got four screws, one here, 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 and here. Once you get those, the cluster's actually loose. However, you have to remove the actual uh, drive cable right here, and this is for your speedometer. So the easiest way I found to do that, and I've learned a little bit since my first video, is trying to come through the side over here and up under the dash is a little bit tough. But if you can, you can reach your hand underneath the left side of the steering column. And when you get back in there, there's a little plastic clip on that uh, drive. And here, let me show you what it looks like. So with the cluster opening staring you right in the face there, this right here is going to be your actual uh, speedo cable right there. So when you get to your hand vicariously, there it is. Right here, you can grab it on the back of the cluster, pull down that plastic clip right there, and just pull back. Once you do that, you can actually roll the cluster towards you and you can get to the single plug right here. So you can see the single plug has many wires. What we're gonna do is gonna go through and unplug these, or unpin them rather, and we're gonna solder in all of the matching corresponding wires with the wires corresponding here on the back with a 16 pin plug and a six pin plug. So I'll go through, um, pull these out, go ahead and solder everything in. That way we'll basically have two cluster harnesses now. 
we can actually just set the cluster in there reconnect the battery and just do a functional check now one thing i'm going to show you guys how to do to extend and route the wire for the actual speedometer cable once you put this cluster in as you can imagine the speedometer cable is you know set right in the center of the cluster well with this one um, it's over here on the right side so what i've had to do on my last install was pull this back down and out and route it underneath here and when you do that you can actually go underneath the truck and take some of the slack out of that cable just to give you about another inch and a half or two inches which will allow you to clip back into that speedometer cable real easy so let's go to time lapse solder some wires in Alrighty guys, now we're looking for the tag signal for the cluster. All right, so as you can see, the C connector underneath there is picking up the tag signal. So BK has identified where we're gonna tap in to get that signal cluster. You can see we're doing a cool jump scheme here. And this goes all the way back underneath the truck to the ignition coil. So in lieu of having to tap at the ignition coil, we are going to tap right in there. Right here. Where BK just identified our spot. All right, so since BK found our spot for our attack signal, you can see there in this plug here, which you'll find behind your fuse box, just unplug it. There's a solid blue wire coming from the chassis side, which is basically that direction. You can tap right into it there and then run this blue wire here that I've got loose up to the blue wire there in the cluster pigtail, and that will provide you with your tachometer signal uh, for your cluster. Now that we've tested the cluster, my dad's gonna get in here and clean up the rat's nest he's made. Let's get to it! Gee, rat's nest, these kids. All right, so now that I've cleaned up the rat's nest, my daughter so eloquently put it, you can see here we've now got two plugs taped up nicely there and you can see our blue wire there which goes back down to our tack signal there so that goes way down underneath the dash there back to where we made that tap so the next thing up we're going to do is go ahead and take this speedometer cable and i'm going to remove it back down through that hole and basically route it underneath you can see this area right through here and i can't remember if i have to go up top or underneath this but it basically needs to come up right through here in order to go into the cluster with a tachometer because the speedometer sits more situated to the right side here versus the center um, so in doing that the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go underneath the truck and loosen up all the speedometer cable brackets um, and just take as much slop out of those um, the length of the cable that we can that way whenever we come back up here to the truck it'll give us an extra inch and a half or two which will be just enough for us to plug it in right to the back of that speedometer. All right, so we're underneath the truck now, and as you can see, we are looking for our speedometer cable that comes straight from the transmission. So that is gonna be this one right here on the outside. And we're gonna go through and loosen up all of these brackets right here. See a 10 millimeter bolt here. And we're going to try to take as much slack forward towards the truck that we can just to give the optimum length of that speedometer cable so that we can adjust it once we get um, um, underneath the dashboard and pulling it up through the floorboard to give it a little more length. So we'll start here. I'll show you the other ones. All right, so we got that first one adjusted and we're literally talking about a quarter inch right there. But trust me, every little bit helps. You can see where it's clean 
showing that uh, we slid that forward. So let's move to the next one. Okay, so the next stop for the bracket is right behind the front axles if you got a four wheel drive truck. There again, you can see we've slid that cable forward from that bracket there. Uh, we might've got half inch, maybe three quarter inch out of that adjustment there, but still within tolerance. We're still grabbing the uh, little sleeve there, so I like it. Let's keep going. All right, we've made it to our last adjustment spot. This is pretty much right in front of the front uh, cross member there. You can see there we've got our final adjustment there in our bracket, that's the center uh, cable right there. And I hate to go all Blair Witch Project on you, but you know how it is. Uh, got maybe three quarters adjustment out of that. So the next stop is right underneath the chassis and it is you follow this line right here, it goes behind the bumper. And right there is the destination. So we're gonna move to the top of the truck underneath the dashboard and pull all that slop up, which will give us a little bit longer speedometer cable. After you've got all the adjustments underneath the truck, you're gonna come up here underneath the dash and you're going to pull up on this right here um, for extra length for the cluster. Come here guys, zoom in. Let me show you what we've done. So this right here is our cable. Remember at the first part of the video, it was in this center hole right here, but we rerouted it over here to the side so we could fit in our new cluster. All right, cluster's in. We got the speedometer cable hooked up on the back and friends, countrymen, lend me your ears. Because as always, it is tight quarters university. So if you look up in here, you can see right there is the back of that th that uh, speedometer cable. Right about there, the tip of my finger. Zoom in on it. Zim, zim, bada, bim. That's it right there. So fish your hand vicariously through this little area here and try to get that to clip back on the cluster and you should be all square. Speedometer function check. 1996 Honda Acti SDX from BT. And we are tacking. And we are speedometering. Can't ask for much more than that, folks. That's what the mission and the vision of this video was. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. Yet another right hand drive on classic. Super excited Billy with BT Transportation and JDM Imports gave us the opportunity to install his 16 pin mint chocolate chip cluster. As you can see, we got the pin out here, pause the video here or earlier. Also excited because I too have a 16 pin cluster that I plan on putting in my truck whenever I put that electric power steering unit from one of the vans coming soon. BK, how'd you feel about it? BT's poker face has nothing on Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga, her p -p poker face, p -p poker face. <laughs> Dad jokes. Nonetheless, if you like what Ron's doing, please remember to subscribe. Mr. Blister, where have you been? Man, I thought we worked that through. I mean, we worked it through, but we're filming the end of a video and you just showed up again. Yeah. Not again. This guy, the nerve. Ugh. Nonetheless, folks, until next time, take care.